Hi, guys. Welcome to the Chelsea Skidmore Show. I'm here today with my guest, Sarah Weinshank. Hi. Comedian Sarah Weinshank. Hi. Thanks for having me. So formal. <laughs> Another great outfit as usual from Sarah. You want to describe it for the listeners? Um. Okay. I would say it is like a tan, ruffly shirt. Uh, that has what I what we found out is called a pussy bow. Yeah. Um, and a scalloped collar. So I don't know. I'm sure there'll be a picture on the internet somewhere. I right? love it. Yeah, you have such great style. I want to get. In, I didn't expect to get into it right at the top. That's okay. We can get into it right now. We can get into it later. Whatever you want. You you, know? you pull off bow ties. I love a bow tie. Yeah. I just like. I, I don't know. I've always really, really liked bows, even like as a kid. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I was always like very particular about what I wore uh, from like a pretty early age. Like I would, I wouldn't let my parents dress me. Like, oh, really? Yeah, no, not at all. Does your parents have good style? My mom does. My dad's just like a helpless older Jewish man. You know what I mean? Like, like most older, older Jewish men are. Yeah, like he's like um, in like an Adidas track pant and like a orthopedic shoe. That sounds cool. Yeah, he started wearing Timberlands. Um, really? He's been wearing Timberlands for... There's like one type of Timberland that he really likes, but it's like really weird because he's not like the typical Timberland demographic. <laughs> yeah. And so he was like driving to Camarillo like like often to get these... To go to the Timberland outlet to get these shoes. How did it start? Was there a weekly hike in it Big was, Bear? <laughs> it was just like one... Uh, Camarillo Outlet Mall outing and he discovered the Timberland Outlet. Turns out he's a big fan of Timberlands. Yeah. And but only a very specific type. And it's like hard to find. He's gotta be in the sweatsuit with the Timberland. Right? Yeah. Then your Busta Rhymes. Or I don't know who Yeah, was. he's on his way to becoming Busta Rhymes. Speaking of rappers, uh Mac Miller. I don't even know his music. I mean, me either. Okay. Because I mean, so I'm not going to lie. I know. So many people... He died yesterday of an overdose, right? Right. And so many people have been talking about it uh, and, like, you know, posting, like, pictures of people listening to... Like, the, al the songs they're listening to. Right. And everyone's, like, so upset. I'm like, I don't know any of his music at all. And then I put it on today, one song, and I was like, I've never heard this in my life. Well, but, like, how are you supposed to find out out about music after, like, a certain point? You know what I mean? What do you mean? Well, I don't, like, listen to new music. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. how does one find out about new music unless they make a concerted effort to keep up with, like, the happenings? Yeah. Yeah. I went to, I did karaoke one time with a bunch of people who were born after, like, you know, 1995. Nightmare. Yeah. And I was like putting on all these fun old songs. And then this guy there was like, Chelsea, put on something that was like first people born after 1999. Or no. Yeah. Well, are you a karaoke person? You know what? I never thought I was, but I tried it and I had a lot of fun doing it. But I don't think I would have been able to do it earlier in my life. I think this is like a later in life confidence. Oh, you've grown into karaoke. I mean, confidence. I haven't done it too many times, but I think it depends on like the people you're with and the setting. It, it could be fun and you can make it into like a big performance and kind of just be silly with it. Yeah, no, I could see that. See, like, I think maybe you're right. I, I, I'm not a karaoke person, but I do think that people can grow into like a karaoke type of confidence. Well, yeah, I, I'm not looking to be a solo uh, karaoke artist right. in a bar, like belting out uh, no. like a ballad. Like people, some types of people just go to do karaoke to like flex their like singing abilities. Totally. They're That's like a certain type of person. Right. And it's like, damn, I get it. If I could sing, I probably would do the same. Like, it seems like a self-indulgent, masturbatory thing, but it's like, that's what stand-up's for, so. Totally. I, I wish I was, like, a really good singer, too. Me, too. Like, that is the one fucking thing. <laughs> like, I wish that more than anything. Oh like, I God. wish that I could sing. Mm-hmm so badly like I want to take singing but yeah then I'm like, do I when I was younger I was just singing and my mom walked by and she was like Chelsea do you want to take voice lessons and I was like no but like inside I was like yes and I yeah, just never forgot that, that moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah because there's something weird like there's like musical theater people and that whole thing and that's mm -hmm. kind of scary like, I don't like musicals me either well I did rewatch La La Land actually um, just recently and I really enjoyed it and I cried at the end. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen it even. Oh, so. it's, it's really good. 
the second time. The first time <laughs> I was like, uh, I, I don't, yeah, I'm not, everyone loves, I'm, everyone loves musicals. See, like, I'm into it maybe. No, I don't think so. The dancing, it's so vulnerable. You know what it is? I think it's just too much. <laughs> I think people, they're just being so vulnerable and it, but now I'm in a different place, um, sort of like comedically and with, it's all about like vulnerability. I think the ability to like be so silly and like in front of an audience and acting really like dorky. Right. There's something like fun and attractive about that to me right, right now. But, right. It's you know, so like scary being, to me, the vulnerability it's, of that. It's so sc- It's This is a very new thing. <laughs> Yeah, like it's just been in the past year, really. But I'm I'm trying to dive deep into it. Well, no, like I respect that because um, I actually was just listening to a fucking TED talk about vulnerability. Brene Brown. <laughs> yeah, have you have you listened to that? I did listen to it, and like, it's like I listened to it. It was so um, hyped up, and yeah, and I listened to it, and it didn't do anything for me the first time. But for me, I think. TED Talks can be, for some reason, a little hard to follow. Well, also, it's like, eh. it's like, I don't know, the vulnerability one when I first listened to it didn't do anything for me, but then I listened to the other one that she did on shame, and I was like, whoa, this speaks way more to me than the vulnerability one. I wonder if, is that, I can't remember which one. The shame thing sounds familiar. Well, it's like, kind of like the two things that she studied in, like, her uh Matt whatever got for doctorate or whatever Mm -hmm. she studied vulnerability and shame and Mm -hmm. and how um a lot of times like those two things go hand in hand I guess being okay with shame being okay with vulnerability without basically feeling shame Mm, you know what that's I'm saying? huge we're not shaming yourself for being vulnerable i'm gonna have to watch both of those again yeah like they're more like listening to because ted talks is like and there's moments of it where you're like okay you know it's hard sometimes when you're used to being around funny people to listen to uh <laughs> yeah we've been having problems with uh the an audio book yeah, yeah oh that audiobook right? yeah badass by jensen saro <laughs> yeah it's, first of all for an audiobook to be good you gotta have a uh, i don't like her voice i don't like her voice either and she has really bad jokes they're like bad bad jokes they're like 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 she'll call a vagina of a jj those Ugh, types of jokes and it's like a, a trigger it's <laughs> like and you're like oh my god why did you say that i can't keep listening but then but if you continue and stay with it, it do- there are moments of like, damn, that was helpful and useful. But yeah, it, yeah. it does almost sound like someone's just like, it- it's triggering. What I'm trying to do is just focus on the information and like ignore and let all those other things slide. Because when she gets to, yeah, when you learn the information about, you know, uh, like whatever it's like she's talking to I'm like yeah, forgetting. Yeah. No, no no i know exactly what you're saying it's like you it's like if you see some somebody... manifestation and yeah positivity and it, right it's like um co- connecting with someone who's ugly even though it's against your better judgment. you know what i'm saying it's like you get over it you're like okay i can still connect to her i hear what she's saying it's still valuable the package isn't how i would present it yeah i'm i'm trying to look up oh should we play a clip of her voice yeah Let's... This audio program is oh, presented okay. by Audible. Let me, a, um, let me go to the chapters. Um, I actually started. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Chapter five. Self perception is a zoo. Ugh. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm not okay. The title of my friend Cynthia's yet to be written autobiography. Oh my god! I can't. I can't listen to it. <laughs> I have a friend who's a professional speaker. She's the kind of person who is so articulate, so powerful and bright and naturally captivating that she could be standing at the counter ordering a burrito and I'd get all teary eyed. Okay. Like that's getting like, <laughs> Yeah. And it's like, okay, is that a there. joke? Is that a joke? I mean, you know what I mean? Like the teary eyed burrito thing? Like, it, is that a joke? It was so uncomfortable. But yeah, I think she doesn't know how to write jokes, but she does have some good information. I'm trying to pull up someone else I, on the subject of audiobooks. Um, <laughs> the, the divine, um, the divine, oops. Fuck. Fuck. 
Uh, this one is The Law of Divine Compensation by Marianne Williamson. Oh. Have you ever heard that? I'm going to play a little clip from that just because we're having fun. Is she more? <laughs> Chapter 6, Beyond Guilt. Whoa. <laughs> Another major category of thoughts that deactivate the law of divine compensation is guilt. Whoa. <laughs> Sometimes we have a pretty good success rate at forgiving others, but we aren't so good at forgiving ourselves. We think, okay. I can believe oh, that the is. universe was programmed to give me what would make me happy. But then I blew it, and I can't forgive myself. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer those more, like, robotic voices. And now, I mean, that's a pretty good segue into Esther Hicks. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, yeah, we've been talking, yeah, motivational videos. What would you call that? I would call it, well, I first got into it as, like, a form of, like, self-help. Yeah. Um, because I had been in a really negative uh phase of thinking and my friend who uh does hair her a lot of her successful clients listen to esther hicks Mm -hmm. yeah who also goes by abraham hicks who also goes by abraham hicks and that was a big thing for me to try to like understand yeah and i don't how would we define i think abraham hicks is the character or persona that esther hicks channels Right. She says that she taps into um, source energy and, and through source energy is able to channel like her divine alter ego who's named Abraham Hicks. You have to be tuned in. Tapped. Tuned in. in tapped tapped on. on. Fuck. Wait. What is it? I know this. I know this. Turned tuned on. in, tapped in, and turned on. Yeah. Tune in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She says that over and over yeah. again. Yeah. Tuned in, tapped in, turned on. Right. But I, I like I like her. She really, um, I just find her to be like super interesting to listen to. Like I don't listen to her and think, oh man, this is boring or like that was a bad joke. Like if she makes a joke, she normally crushes. Yeah. Right? Uh, and well, her like, audience, well, I think that's also the difference is that hers are all live recordings. Yes. And those are audiobooks. So there's no studio audience laughing. Yeah. But what's funny about uh esther hicks is all the people laughing are clear like they're they're gonna laugh at anything she says because they're they seem like very diehard followers yeah who yeah. Like, yes who are just like they're like, like breathing it's it, almost like a cult leader and their uh group members That's right the passion behind their appreciation of what she's saying absolutely they're like groupies they like swear by this because um i think that I do think that there is something to um, positive thinking. It's uh, – talk about vulnerability. It's vulnerable to go to these people live. Oh, yeah. Like, that's I don't a whole – I mean, I'll, I'll hide behind YouTube all day. But going live, that's, like, another – Yeah, like, I'll hide behind YouTube all day as long as nobody knows that I'm e- – like, mm-hmm. but on my YouTube page, for some reason – it said that I, it says, and I can't get it off, that I liked an Abraham Hicks video, uh-huh. and I'm like, keep trying to unclick it, and I'm like, why won't it fucking unclick? Yeah, and it's giving me like severe anxiety because I'm like, who's uh, looking? I don't know, but that's the thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Who is looking? It but doesn't then it's matter. Like, what is someone going to say? You're you're looking up manifestation. <laughs> you're focusing on trying to be more it's sane a- and self help. Whatever, yeah. whatever capsule it comes in really doesn't matter. But yeah. There is that vulnerability that, like, I like to present a certain part of who I am, not all of it all of the time. Yeah, I I started listening to Esther Hicks um, after a really bad breakup two years ago when I felt, like, really insane and I felt really depressed. And if you've ever gone through, you know, something where you feel so depressed every day, you're just like, you know, you just have a really heavy energy. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to play this nonstop. I literally listened to her, like, 24 hours a day. Like every time I drive in my car when I was like in my apartment getting ready and like it really helped uplift me and it it, it gives you hope and puts you in like a more like a better vibe. I don't know. Yeah. The whole vortex thing is really um, interesting. Right. So how would you explain that to somebody who <sighs> I just started listening again? I think uh-huh. I took like a six month break. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's like. When you're in, well, first of all, it's about your vibration. Right. So she says that we live in a vibration-based universe. Which is your energy, our thought, your thoughts are energy. 
Right. So when you're thinking negative thoughts, you're putting out negative energy and you're not receiving vibrational energy and opportunity. So you have to be it right. So you have to be in a positive like mindset or just like not negative. Like what were you saying? Like, oh, the gratitude part. Well, also, yeah, like she says. So basically the whole concept is that, you know, like energy attracts like energy. So if you're um, putting if you're negative all the time, why would why would you connect with positive people? That just doesn't make sense. Just from like a science, like you're not even, you know, trying. You know what I mean? Like it makes sense that vibrationally you wouldn't connect if we're all energy and words have vibrations and thoughts have vibrations and sound has vibrations, all of it. So that's the basic principle. And so she explains that when you are like all human beings were put on this planet, um, to fulfill their dreams basically and to be happy and when you start tuning into that happiness into good thoughts then you will see the results of that through like equally matched energy and so she says that when you are in your quote-unquote vortex then you are in alignment with who you really are and a lot of times um that comes from you know positive thoughts and and you know and watching your statements and not saying like nothing ever good happens to me or that type of thing and also she says that getting into a state of appreciation um uh and gratitude generally results in more positivity if you're having trouble getting to that place so that's changing your thoughts like Right. So and she says, like, you can start small because, like, to me, the whole thing behind it is like the worst thing that can happen if you start thinking more positively is that it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. That's like the worst thing that happens. Yeah. The best thing that happens is that, like, you're living more positively. Well, I liked what you said about um, we were talking about this the other day and kind of like an example of that is like, like, say you were supposed to get like a phone call today from like a job and you didn't get it and instead of sinking in that feeling and you know going into like a a fear spiral and you know I don't you know I'm not good enough nothing good will ever happen for me instead to put your focus on wow today was such an awesome day for me I I went to my favorite breakfast place I I had an amazing you know croissant and isn't that like the yeah that's kind of the or or like and she says like to just go and rather than to dwell on something that's like super negative and like really zero in on it and like use it as a way to shame yourself for not being in the place that you vibrationally want to be she would say instead to go general and to just start like yeah I had a you know it's a great day like I had a great breakfast I'm so lucky that I'm able to have breakfast at this time like most people are at work right now I get to do this I'm so lucky like and not not just to bullshit yourself but to actually try to find those um that type of appreciation and then also to use points of contrast as like a launching pattern as an opportunity to redefine what it is that you want while you're on the planet basically yeah i i uh, gratitude is i mean i try to do a daily gratitude in the morning do you do those yeah i try to do it i do it a lot at the end of the night because Mm -hmm. at the end of the night like after the whole i'm always like fuck this shit like i'm ready for bed like i don't want to talk to anybody you know what i mean so i try to do it then it's almost better i feel like it could almost be better doing it at night because then you get to talk about everything that happened in the day well i also do think though but there, it's also the a way morning. to start the morning. And I also try to write in a notebook sometimes you in do? the morning. Well, it's this thing that I learned in the artist's way. It's oh, called morning pages. That. Yeah. If you write for 10 minutes or something? Three pages. It's usually okay. like half hour. So the whole concept behind that is that if you're any type of artist, whether it be like a writer or a painter or whatever, you activate your creativity by writing for 10 minutes every day. Well, or I, I feel like I've like I don't do it all the time. Um, when I do do it every day, it makes me feel incredible. Uh, it makes me feel like this is weird to say out loud, but it makes me feel like God is speaking through me. No, I get that. When I write something really magical happens and unconsciously I'll like, you know, I'll like even write answers. If I'm upset about something like, you know, w- family issue career whatever relationship um 
friends I, I'll be writing uh, in the notebook about it and then I'll get like this answer back from God without even thinking okay that makes a lot of sense because I know exactly what you're talking about because it's, yeah like, I, I don't but when you have a pen is it is it no, easier pen well Pen, I get pen and like, writing. I mean, I normally write those types of things in a notebook, right? But I've been typing on my computer and been on a roll, and things will just pour out of me that I'm not thinking about, and it feels like some kind of wire connected to a computer that my brain isn't a part of, and it just flows out of me in a different way, right? Like you're tapped into, like yeah, that makes yeah. that makes sense, and so, and so. It's interesting. That's really interesting because um, it's, I don't know. I feel like tap, being able to tap into your creativity, you can do it normally. It's easier when you're in a place of like alignment. Yeah. It's also different um, because you're like tapping, well, not different. You're also tapping into your unconscious. Yes. I mean, I have like. Or your subconscious. Which one is it? I don't know. I like, feel stupid. It does feel like it's like a different level of, like you're exploring different levels of consciousness because I have like woken up in the middle of the night, written down something on a post yeah. and then gone back to bed. And then in the morning been like, what I write? Oh yeah, that was really funny. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that came from at all. Yeah. Or what, what the fuck? Well, it's like yesterday I was writing in a notebook. I just felt the urge to like write. And then like I just started writing and it was like you need to start writing a movie. Like you love movies. You've always wanted to write a movie. And I, I wrote one screenplay one time and I've been focused on pilots, you know, yeah. and I also want to I've always wanted to write a movie on my own. And I love to, you know, make shit. It's like I look at people like you know Sofia Coppola Greta Gerwig like you know these females who make these you know cool movies that are like you know popular and artsy and you know totally. and it's like I know I could be you know what I mean and yeah. it's like fuck I need it but then I'm always like ah oh, the idea and well, I get wrapped up on other things and I'm like well once I start writing it will come out which is always like the thing there's always like an excuse to just not take a step do you know what I mean well, right, because it's, sometimes it's like you don't know which – it's interesting because you're like, okay, um, I don't know how the fuck to do that. But it's like you, you don't have to know exactly how to do it. You just need to take the first step. And totally. And like kind of just mm – -hmm. I was having a conversation today with someone who was like, oh, and I have to ask you about podcast stuff. And three weeks ago we talked about um, how he wanted to make a pod – he wanted to start a podcast. And it's just like – not bashing him whatsoever but it's like oh in three weeks you haven't made any progress on that because people don't just start things right because i wanted to do a podcast by myself for two years same and i've only been doing this one for like i don't know eight months or something well for me i was like i've always had podcasts with different podcast partners mm -hmm. and then i just got to the place of like you know it's a lot easier to just depend on yourself in terms of like you know logistics and like mm -hmm. getting you have to schedule and all of that and it's just easier it's so interesting, though, the the way that our mind works. And is that just because we don't want to be vulnerable? <laughs> Bringing you know? it back. I was going to play. Should we play a little clip of Esther Hicks? Yeah, we can. Yeah. This is letting go is getting into the vortex. Oh, fuck. There's an ad. Of course. This is just like a that's so annoying. I hate these ads that like pop up. You know who's really into Esther Hicks? Uh, Who? Oprah. Really? Yeah. We talk about the vortex. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> what we really want, like, everyone to find a way of, of experiencing is your vortex, no matter who you are, will take you in at one time or another every single day. Mm -hmm. Something will happen <laughs> and you will come into alignment with who you are. Mm -hmm. It might be a bird that you see. It might All right. Be well, you get... Hold on. That's not... We need it to get... Make those might be a bird. Shifts, you see. Yeah. So is it appropriate for you to feel the sting of injustice? Of course it's... I don't know. You get the idea. Look look it up. You know, yeah. Yeah. So She's great. This is different, but talking about seeing these people live. Yeah. When I was, you know, three years ago, I was in, you know, a bad relationship and... Um, a friend asked me to come with him to see Pat Allen. Have you ever heard oh of Pat Oh, my Al God. Wait, that's so weird. <laughs> I just was listening to Pat Allen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I'm I really to... curious about okay. what you think because that's so fucking. Like, okay. That's vulnerable. 
Pat Allen. Going to see Pat, Pat Allen. Okay, so yeah, when the people. <laughs> that's so weird. That's so weird because I was literally uh-huh. listening to a seminar with oh, really? Pat Allen. Today? Today. That's so. That's, that's a trip. That's fucking crazy. And I was like, who are these people? Because it's like they record the seminars. Was it yeah. in Orange County? That's no, no, it was Marriott. in, um, yeah, it was at a Marriott, I she think. She loves a Marriott. But I think it was in, um, like, Century City. Okay. Or, like, uh, what's Culver, it was in Culver City. Okay. So, basically, Pat Allen is, uh, like, a relationship expert. Guru, she's like, but she's older. She's, she's older. Like, and some of her ideas are a little. I actually don't really agree. I, I what I took for I, I so weird. So first I was of all, just listening to her, I'm like, yeah, there's moments of like that makes re- a lot of sense, and then of like, you're fucking insane, Pat Allen. <laughs> well, I think it's a lot of like serving the man, which I don't yes. like. A lot of like old fashioned thoughts, which I'm not like saying that from like a feminist place, but from like a, a um, human place. <laughs> yeah, it just seemed like uh, too submissive. Yeah, like it just seemed or, like it wasn't up. It seems or like, like being really subservient. Yeah, it just seems like old fashioned. Um, it's not updated. Mm-hmm. It's like I can see what she's saying, and if we could just get like a a software update on it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because she's yeah. like talking about things, and you're like, okay, but now there's apps and there's this yeah. and there's that, and like dating is very complex. Like, yeah, you know, it's it, it's not the 1950s. But wait, so you went to go see her. So three years ago, a okay. sponsor of mine had her book. Uh, I think it was called. Is it called Getting to I Do? Yeah, it's called Getting to I Do. So she gave me the book. She was done with it. I wanted to read it because I was in this relationship where I was trying to tie this guy down who didn't want to be with me. Uh, and I'm so glad it didn't happen. And we um, all had those. and I got I took the book from her. I was reading it like crazy, and I put wrapping paper on the outside of the book because because I didn't want anyone to see what I was reading. Yeah. Like remember when you would cover your textbooks with paper in high absolutely. school? Absolutely, absolutely. Because I was like, I wouldn't even order one of her books off the internet. Yeah, and then like I'd be embarrassed. Yeah. So I so I had the book. I was reading it, and then <laughs> randomly enough, a friend of mine maybe a couple of days later was like, Hey, uh, there's this person named Pat Allen. And I was like, Oh, I'm reading her book. And then she's like, yeah, she's having a, uh, like a, t- a seminar. Do you want to come? Um, and I was like, okay. And she was like, I'm going to go with like a girlfriend of mine. And I was like, cool. It was like three, you know, three single girl, you know, <laughs> three single <laughs> girls going, well, I was in a relationship, but it felt like three single girls going to like this relationship seminar, yeah, which sounds, I have yeah, to be honestly, honest, felt like a low. It seems like a low. It felt. It, it fe- feels like like honestly, the thought of doing that just made me feel like I could. It was embarrassing, and at the time, uh, <laughs> the like, guy I was dating, he made me share my location with him at all times. Oh, that's crazy, right? Yeah, that's like beyond crazy. Yeah, it's like you know who it was. Oh, uh, yeah, for yeah. sure. So he made me share my location with him at all times. He said, oh, so it was just always shared. Always shared so he can always see where I was. So but, you were, like, microchipped. I mean, I think he probably was cheating on me and projecting. I've been in those before. Because, like, why would he be acting like that? You know, it was just kind of odd. But it's also, that's such insane behavior. I know. To be so like- he saw that I was there. He saw that I was at the Marriott in oh. Culver City. Really? And I had to tell him where I was because it sounds like I was like hooking up with some random like, guy why else at, would the you be at a Marriott. I mean, that sounds like gross. That sounds like prostitute shit. You know right. what I mean? She's at the, a Marriott in Culver City. That sounds like, at, like three yeah. p.m. on a Saturday. No, it was like <laughs> nine p.m. or something okay. on like a Monday. Okay. Uh, and then I told him, and then he goes, "I had a feeling you were at something like that." Which was even more <laughs> embarrassing that he knew I went to it because I was like trying so hard to save this relationship. But enough about that. So we went to the thing and I wasn't really like feeling it and that was it. And I didn't really take much from it. But I've heard this Marianne Williamson who's at the Saban Theater two Mondays out of the month. She's back and forth. I heard, I've heard hers is very good. Oh, And what is I hers? would go to hers. Hers is, oh, she, she did the, a course on miracles. Which is like a very popular book. Okay, wait, because I've heard her name before. Yeah, she's she's popular, and she was the one who I was playing that other Audible book that I had, the divine comp, uh, divine law of compensation, and I, I like her. I think she's. Um, what is her? I don't. I never. Well, of course, we should go together. Oh, oh yeah. fuck! I'm starting an acting class. 
on, the, <laughs> on now that it's on Monday nights for the next year. Oh, it used to be. No. It used to be, yeah, Sunday and some other day. Now it's Monday and Wednesday. Maybe I'd go on the 17th if she's there. Um, I mean, so what's whatever the deal with her? What? I don't know. I There was a book called A Course in Miracles, okay, um, which is like a really popular spirituality book. Mm-hmm. And she um, wrote like her response to it or like work she did with it. I don't really know how to explain it. But so she's like kind of like the face of that and has made a bunch of other books but her her particular book that I've listened to um you know all these people kind of say the same thing it's really truly all about like putting like manifestation being like positive um right yeah it it does even if you look at it like even on like a a larger level like it's like the saying the same things and i feel like religion is even saying the same things that these same things are saying Mm -hmm. even if you look at like something like like christianity right and you can compare that to like abraham hicks in that she says that like we are divine beings who are here who are also human in christianity that they say basically the same shit it's really like, that's in- yeah. how do you know that you because took a I, went religion to, class? I went to all girls catholic school oh right and but you're jewish yeah my dad is a jew my parents just sent me to catholic school just for the education not really for the religious are you just half backing. jewish yeah me too yeah do you know your uh what i'm 46 percent ashkenazi I know I don't know the exact percentage, but I know that I'm pro- I'm a lot. I'm all Ashkenazi. I know uh-huh. that. Um, what else are you? Um, my mom is Puerto Rican. Really? And Irish. I didn't know that. Yeah, my mom is. My mom grew up in Queens, over like an Irish uh-huh. bar in Astoria. Um, and she is yeah half Irish and half Puerto Rican. So oh, Puerto so you're Puerto Rican Jewish? Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, it's really it's it's weird. It's like an That's interesting a good mix. combination because um yeah, there aren't that many Puerto Ricans in California. No, they're not. Uh-huh. And I but I can recognize them when I see them cuz I'm from New York. Cuz in New York it's it's Puerto Rican and Dominican and yeah. here it's Mexican. Right, totally. And um but when my mom grew up in in New York, you know, uh she didn't even know that she was Puerto Rican until she was probably like ten or eleven because they always just told her she was Italian and she didn't. Know yeah, it. you like Puerto. You Ricans, look Italian to me. Yeah, I get a lot of people ask me if I'm Italian or um also like Armenian. <sighs> it's it'll be random. Uh-huh. They'll be like, "Are you Armenian?" And I'm like, "I." That's, that's odd, so but that's random. if you were not in California, people wouldn't ask you if you were Armenian. No, it's like if I'm chilling in Glendale, you know. Do you feel like connected to any sort of? Puerto Rican or like like when you hear a song that's like okay for some, for some, <laughs> I feel like maybe like uh no like you mean like is it like innate like in me like I'm like oh yeah fuck and all of a sudden I just like start like <laughs> gyrating and like dancing like kind of like J-Lo-ish um no like I I have a temper I don't know if that's like a Puerto Rican thing or just mm-hmm. like a mm-hmm. do you have a temper I can have a temper, yeah. I would have never guessed that. Um, Yeah, but, like, it takes a lot to get me mad. But when I'm mad, like, there's a moment of just, like, pure insanity. And I just need, like, probably, like, 10 minutes to calm down. And then normally I'm fine no matter how mad I am. And then I just get over things. I get over things easily, too. Yeah, but, like, it's almost to a fault how quickly I can get over them. Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, am I supposed to be over this? Because, like other people want to be you know what i mean yeah i and i'm always the first one to want to get over something i i don't like being in a fight with other people or like feeling animosity no yeah i always like how can i wrap this up and put a bow on it and like like, (laughs) a pussy bow yeah let's tie us with a pussy bow um, I can't believe it's called a pussy bow. I know, isn't that odd? But I think it was like something from the. We're talking about blouses that have a bow, like a secretary blouse. Right. They're. It's called a pussy bow. Yeah, almost like ascot ish. Yeah. In a way, but not like a string. So, a uh, so you went to Catholic school. I mean, love love a uniform. Love but were you uniform. experimenting with fashion on the weekends then, since you're always in a uniform, or like when did you? Have you always been dressing so stylish? I mean, like, okay, so when I was, like, a little kid, like, little, 
Um, I remember my mom, I, I used to make her retie the bows on my shoes so that they looked exactly the same. And she was like, no, I'm not doing this. Like you have to do it yourself. Like if you want, I'm not going to retie and I wanted mm-hmm. them to be perfect or like I was, is that OCD? I don't know if it's like OCD or just like in terms of like being so like I knowing what I like to put perfectionism yeah like the thought of having somebody else tell me what to wear yeah is like a nightmare i know i hate that yeah so um yeah i don't know even like when i was little i used to have like these fruit <laughs> beaded fruit necklace and bracelet and i probably went through like 12 of them i kept breaking them they were like string with like these fruit beads my mom i, I would beg her to take me to go get them we'd get more um i had like a purse i would carry with like my accessories and it was rainbow i would wear like uh ruffle socks uh and mary jane's like i love that they were called um my my grandpa used to always take me when i was a little girl to get uh christmas shoes and he would call them like party they would just call them party shoes they were like patent leather uh mary jane's and i would get them for every every like holiday season it was like a thing it was like a thing that we did and i I would want to wear yeah it was really cute like they would take me like the special shoe store i would get these like little leather mary janes and i would wear them for the holidays but i would want to wear them like i would just wear them all year round yeah yeah with like a ruffle sock and like that that sounds so cute i love that whole um like sock look and i used to be I, I love like uniforms and schoolgirl outfits. And Me too. Uniform, I think, is like, yeah, or like, like I really want to get like a maid's um, outfit, not a costume, like a legit pink maid's outfit. And I want to have it tailored short and like, yeah. you know, wear it around the house and I'm cleaning to be cute. You know? I li- yeah, no, I like that. See, like, I, I like that type of shit too. But I like actual uniforms. I, I don't like, like costumes. Too. Because you know what it is? Okay, I think it's easier. Like, for me, I honestly do feel like having a uniform, because I had a uniform from kindergarten to 12th grade. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it was, it's easy because you don't have to think about yeah. things in a way which is like there is something nice about that especially like as an adult I'm like okay like these are the bottoms that I have and then I know what I can like switch out in terms of tops with it kind of mm-hmm. like I just feel like yeah I don't know but in school I went through a lot of different weird phases it was like on the weekends I was like fuck yeah I want to do that and that and that. what kind of phases did you go through um I went hard <laughs> on um well when limited two first came out yeah did, did you, you ever steal the tank tops from there no i was such a pussy like i'm so i was always so afraid of getting in trouble we all stole the limited two tank tops that was like really? a really big thing to do where i was from no yeah but like you there just... was like the spaghetti strap tank tops they didn't have tags on them and everyone would steal them really yeah this limited two was so cool mm-hmm. i thought it was it was like you can get like a lip gloss a sports bra and like a fucking camisole uh, yeah and you're like can i get this please um you would steal yeah, I stole a lot growing up. You did? Yeah, and then I got caught one time and I never stole again. It was really mortifying. Where did you get caught? I got caught at the Westchester Mall, which is a pretty nice mall, um, outside of Neiman Marcus. No. I had been stealing all day and I didn't know <laughs> what that What do you those, mean? I, I, I had a bag full of stolen shit from a bunch of stores. I didn't know that those round things were cameras above my head because I was like 10. Right. And I was at Neiman Marcus. I stole a bunch of Clinique samples. I walked out with my friend and a cop was a mall cop was waiting there with his legs like spread apart in a power pose with mm-hmm. his um badge like wallet like open like he was, <laughs> mall he was like posing and waiting for me do, do you know what i mean right like i'm just picturing kevin james right now I don't no know he, <laughs> yeah but this guy was like scary he wasn't like well, a f- yeah and you're 10 it was and then he was like and he's like can i see your bag he's like i we like you're i don't rem-. he he said can i go through your bag and then i'll never forget he went through everything and he picked up all my stuff and he picked up a bottle of lotion that i had stolen from i think bath and body works and he goes these are testers as well no yeah no. and i thought he was gonna make me return everything but he didn't and my legs were shaking so much like the entire time and he just took back the clinic samples and then he let me leave and my dad was waiting outside oh, in the car to pick me up and he had no idea and we just went into the car and didn't say anything and i was like 10 minutes late and he had no idea why you know he didn't no. ask and i was like it was it was so scary 
And then my friend got caught stealing from H&M. She stole a bracelet and I was with her, but I didn't even know that she was doing it. And we got pulled into this back room with all these security cameras and she had to get her picture taken and couldn't go to H&M for like a year. No, you're blacklisted from H&M. She did. And that was like probably like a year after it happened to me. And then I was just so scared. You know what I mean? Wait, so did you, would your parents have been pissed? Yeah. Were, I was a bad kid, though. I was a really? troublemaker. Yeah. Were you a C? Like, was it your idea to steal or was it your friend's idea? Like, uh, We just stole. It was just like normal. Really? And, yeah. See, I'd be so afraid. A lot of people stole. So my friend's uh, older sister, she was like the best at stealing. People she was in Nordstrom's a lot to steal. So she would always steal from Nordstrom's. She walked. They don't have tags. This is crazy to me. She walked right into Nordstrom's. Picked a Kate Spade bag up, which were cool when we were yeah. younger. She picked a Kate Spade bag up, uh, bag up, looked at it, put it on her shoulder, and walked right out with it. I'm not that, like... I can't believe she did that. Her entire closet was all stuff that was stolen. It was She was, like, the number one person. Yeah. In high school, there were these girls that stole, and I was, like admirable from a distance but like That's i don't so have funny. the fucking balls to do it so what kind of girl were you in high school um like just wild mm-hmm. wanting to go out all of the time wanting to be around guys all of the time because i was in all girls school yeah what was that like was there like a whole thing with like and did you guys have dances together yeah we had co-ed dances so like i went to louisville which is on which is like the all girls school in the valley on mulholland and Topanga, and then the boys school crespi which was in encino so like there were certain mo- things like throughout the year so it was like homecoming winter formal prom all of that stuff we had with them and then we had like exchange day and that's when like it would be like one day out of the year where it was like school became co-ed uh, that's fun yeah and then like i would just do all the activities at the boys school like since they had the field i like do track and field no interest in i track. did track and field you did which thing did you do they made me do the fucking two mile which at that point mm-hmm. it's like nobody cares you're a shitty runner just and that's then far. also the one mile mm-hmm. and i then i tried doing the 800 and the 400 and i was like dude i hated it are you a fast runner no yeah. are you <laughs> no i i just did it for the dick i, I was te- like <laughs> that's so funny i was like i just want to be around men yeah i technically did pole vaulting but i never made it over once. no i never made it over once I so like- i don't know why i was like <laughs> in it i did field hockey for it seven looked- years though No field hockey what okay pole vaulting looked super fun it's too hard. I, I remember, don't have upper arm strength. I feel like you have to be like a... I remember like big bitches would do like shot put. Yeah. Like with that. <laughs> That's yeah. like such a It was always for the more athletic... Build. Build. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, you're a big bitch. Shot put? Did you play any uh, any other sports? I played soccer. I, was, I played soccer for a long time, but I wasn't good. And mm-hmm. then I got like decent, but still not like a varsity good. Like I played JV in mm-hmm. high school. I played soccer for like from the time I was probably like 10 till the time i was 18 so yeah yeah did you oh, i did field, field hockey, hockey. Yeah. wait so is that just like how did oh how does that work field hockey you never heard of it well like is it just like because i'm thinking roller hockey it's like the same. it's on a field um it's pretty much <laughs> like this, hockey on a field <laughs> it's pretty much like the same as soccer if there's like inner and then like outer do you know what i mean and then it what's the thing on the far right call it starts with the Forward. e oh i don't know I don't know. Um, I think <laughs> it's pretty much like the way that a soccer setup is, uh-huh. um, like position wise. Uh-huh. And you just play, uh, you have like a wooden field hockey stick and a shin guards, a skirt, and then there's like a ball. And yeah, uh-huh. it's it's really fun. But so does the ball, I how never does it move on the grass, I guess is what I'm asking. Fast. So it's not a puck. <sighs> No, it's a it's like a hard uh round ball. Is it more like it's like a tennis ball that's like a hard Oh, it's like, like plexi glass or something. Okay. Was yeah. it fun? Very fun. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it was. Remember like preseason and all that? Yeah. Well, so like what season is field hockey? It's in the fall. Okay. I didn't even offer that at my high school or Yeah, I think it's like a division thing. Okay. I've heard of other I know yeah you know what it might be an east coast thing it might be like because we don't 
that wasn't really a thing. Yeah. Um, there's like water polo and like softball. Mm-hmm. I tried to do softball for a minute. That wasn't. Yeah. Did you go to college? I forgot. Yeah, I went to college. I went to Chapman in Orange County. Oh, right. Yeah. What'd you study there? Communications. Me too. I didn't love it. Yeah. I, well, for me, I was partying a lot in college. Yeah. Um, I, it took me six years to graduate college. four years because I went to three different schools and I lost a lot of credits. Okay. That makes sense. But some classes I just wasn't even showing up for and, or like try, the only things, the only classes I liked were the film classes. Yeah. Did you take any film classes? Um, no, I didn't take film classes. I just wanted to get the fuck out of there. So I literally, I got in there. I graduated early because I was like, I do nice. not want to be here. Mm-hmm. And my parents were kind of were like, you're not going to pursue anything until you have a college degree. They kind of, mm-hmm. that was kind of like. The, do you have a BA? I have a BA. Yeah. Do you have student loans? No. Oh, you're so lucky. I don't have student loans. I'm very lucky. Yeah. I, I wish I didn't have them. It's like I. It's feel like, like they're never ending. Everybody has fucking student yeah. loans. It's like, oh, I'm supposed to get educated so I can get a job, and then you get educated, then you're still like, uh, well, now what? Well, I almost feel like you should only really go to college if like someone else is gonna pay for it. <laughs> well, I think you should go. To or college. like if you're actually gonna use your degree, because communications to me like w- should really only like it's really only if you like work in public relations marketing or advertising or like like yeah when are you gonna go do like qualitative and quantitative research oh my god you know what i mean you're Uh like i just wrote a 40 page paper like like, like, why am i taking inductive logic yeah like i it just doesn't make Mm -hmm. sense but it's just like it's interesting because it feels like there's a better way to teach communications that's more applicable to Mm -hmm. daily life like one of my favorite classes I took was in health communications and it was like um, a very specific course that this school offered and there was like it was just talking about how like things get lost in like medical settings and how there needs to be more clear you know conversations and ways to do that because like a lot of jargon gets lost between like doctors and patients Mm -hmm. it was really interesting and Mm -hmm. like useful and like practical and you could be like okay this is how you use this in the real world versus like you know yeah research communications paper like i wrote a 10 page paper on um what was that fucking movie with Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger where they play gay cow? Brokeback Mountain. Yeah, I wrote like a 10-page paper on like Brokeback Mountain and like That's had to funny. make that like... I wrote a paper on American Psycho. You did? That's interesting. Yeah, I got an A. You did? Yeah. Yeah. This is like, it feels good when though when you would get A's, right? I know. <laughs> like I'm still riding off the highs of like... <laughs> <laughs> still riding off the high of a college A. Yeah. That's so funny. I had a I, I had my own show on the college radio station. You did, and the show was called "I Bang Teachers for A's." No. Yeah. That's what did you? So you went. You studied communications. Did you have a career in mind when you originally went to college? I didn't want. Okay, this is what I told my parents. I was like, I'm not going to college. Mm-hmm. What did you want to do? I wanted to audition for the real world. Yeah, that was my plan. I know that feeling. I was like fuck this you guys don't even understand me okay like stop trying to tell me what to do one Mm -hmm. i want to just be around dick and two like i want to like you know be on the real world yeah did you ever apply um there was an audition in santa barbara and i was always like i'm gonna go apply and my mom was like no you're not and i just listened and just was like i like the fantasy of it i think i think i knew because like for me um i don't think that for me personally i don't think i had the emotional maturity at 18 18 to then if I would have just pursued comedy straight from there I wouldn't it wouldn't have ended well I (laughs) used to yeah I sometimes like uh am jealous of people who started a comedy so early it's like oh you started when you were like 15 yeah oh you do what you want (laughs) but then someone uh actually Jake Weissman I was talking to him about it and he's like who fucking cares like Ooh, you knew what you wanted to do at your 18 like you fucking loser and i was like yeah that's right yeah because it's also like there's i don't know there's some parts of college that i found to be useful like the social aspects up to a certain degree because like i would drink in high school and go out in high school so like yeah. that wasn't fun like being in orange county mm-hmm. with a bunch of drunk people wasn't fun for me were you in a sorority 
No. My colleges didn't have them. My colleges had them, but I was like, I just got out of an all girls school. The last thing I fucking want <laughs> to yeah. do is be around all women. So you just started fucking immediately? <laughs> yeah. And then I had, then I got like, I went into a really serious relationship with someone who I thought that I was going to marry. And um, Oh, really? Yeah. I was in like, I thought that my life was going to be, this is what I thought. Um, I go to the tanning salon, right? Because I'm in Orange County. What else do I do? Yeah. Um, and I continue to get hot pink nail polish. And then I live in a track home with my husband. Wait, what's a track home? It's like, you know, a gated community where all the homes kind of look the same and mm. they're all that tan mm-hmm. color. Like, mm-hmm. you can't tell anyone's house. Cookie from- cutter. Yeah, like cookie cutter, yeah. like suburbia. Like, I thought I was going to do that. And, like, I thought that my college boyfriend, like, at the time was going to be my husband. And that, like, he would go to work and, like, sell real estate. And then I would just, like, be at home. Mm-hmm. Doing I don't know what. Just. Do you guys ever talk anymore? No. Mm-hmm. Well, like, no. Isn't that funny? Like, your, like, my first real boyfriend was when I was in college. Yeah. You know, when I was 18. Yeah. And, like, just, like, it, it's, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. I, I mean, I, like, it is weird. It's weird because, like, because, one, like, I the only reason why I went to Chapman was because they had a good film school. But then I was, mm. I didn't apply to the film school. That's I'd, funny. Because I thought I was going to do broadcast journalism. Me, too. Because I was like, what else am I going to do? Me, too. Like, that seems like it's, it's like, the perfect gap between being on camera without being, like, too much of a narcissist under the guise of, like, journalism. Did you ever get to take classes where you got to make videos? Um, In high school, I did. Mm-hmm. And I took acting classes classes and did all of that um in high school yeah I loved me yeah I was in a couple of those classes in college it was really fun yeah see like I didn't even fuck with that because I was just wanted to get out of it so badly Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to have to apply into the film school because the film school is like was really hard to get into So so what happened uh from after college so then after college um um well my boy my college boyfriend and I break up sorry and and it's like devastating right like I'm of like course. my life is over totally. like um my husband like I think that he's gonna be my husband and he's like I think five, every, five, <laughs> you know I think every girl thinks that the person they date is gonna be their husband yeah or hopes because it's like I just don't want to do this anymore especially like the older you get that you're like okay I'm not fucking around anymore so it's like uh, like I don't want to waste energy on like putting into something that's just whatever i've tried to make every person i've dated be my husband even though none of them were right for me oh yeah <laughs> i mean like the other thing is like it, it's just so crazy how you think that somebody that you spend a bunch of time with especially like in college it's like that dude is obviously like in hindsight he's like an alcoholic like you know what i mean that's just like mm-hmm. it's crazy how some people just continuing just continue to party like how they did in college in real life yeah like i don't like that aspect of college like where the focus is so on partying Uh but like what is that you know what i mean like it's corny it's hack (laughs) it's like that that picture of that dude like drinking a 40 in his shirt says like college well those are like sheltered i don't know yeah but it used to be like i feel like that's like a whole like market it's like animal house yeah like it's a whole specific Beer. lifestyle and then like but you're an adult quote unquote mm-hmm. it's supposed to like stand for independence but it really it's just breeding like <laughs> i feel like you're not an adult until after college no there's nothing adult about <laughs> nothing being is involved. real I'm like okay i'm gonna go into this theme party like i would go mm-hmm. to theme parties but it, they were never fun like i never was like this is fun yeah i'm dressed in a costume i went to college my first three years in hawaii and that's crazy yeah and like it was just all partying and i don't know i kind of just felt like it just felt like lame like everyone in the world was like ahead like getting ahead of me that's how i felt yeah i didn't like that that's why i was like i just want to get out of school Mm -hmm. like i don't want to be in this setting anymore like this is not fun yeah. It wasn't fun. It wasn't stimulating enough for me. But I also was like, went from being in LA to like Orange County in Orange, you know. So after college, did you try to get a job doing anything or pursuing? So then I got a job after college. Well, like in college, I interned at this fashion PR place and I really liked that. It, I didn't really understand what it was just like fun. It was just being around like clothes and like we went to a project, the trade show in Vegas, which was cool and it was like events and fashion PR so I did that and then I thought I wanted to work as a stylist so Mm -hmm. I got a job um at 
Bloomingdale's mm-hmm. in the office of Bloomingdale's um, in the studio services office. So really what that was, it was really just an office job and like stylists would come, they would do polls and I'd like check them out. Yeah. But I had like a 401k and like if, you know, mm-hmm. like my coworkers had worked there a really long time and they were like made pretty good money. Like it was like stable, like yeah. enough. I worked in fashion PR too when you I did. was in college. You did? Yeah, I did. Did in, you like I it? I worked in the closet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was really fun. But what I can't believe and what I was talking about recently was how much swag like just famous people get. It's crazy. I just want to be successful in my career enough to get free stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but like you will. I I've hope so. All the swag. You know what I mean? But then it's also like it's like swag with like a price tag because you're like uh, they get all this shit and then they have to like promote it. It's like not. Yeah. That's just true. It's not just given to give. It's mm-hmm. like given with the intention of you're going to post about this. Right. And you're going to talk about it. Yeah. Right. And you're going to do all of that. Right. That's why it's like remember like um, I worked at like a gifting suite for an award show. <laughs> Is it? But then weren't you like, I want these gifts. Yeah. I'm like, I don't understand. I can't believe some of the stuff that people get. Well, I remember Jessica Alba was there and uh-huh. it was like the Latina, like some type of award. She's so pretty. And she was like so pretty, but she was like so over it because they were like, um, Jessica, do you want these sunglasses? She's like, no. Like she just didn't want them, but she was like kind of bitchy. And I was like, damn, I want those fucking sunglasses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Daisy. Yeah. Fu- it was like Daisy Fuentes. It was like I a Latina her. like award show. And there's like different stations and you could go to each station and like one station's like better than the next. Like, oh, here's an wow. all paid fucking vacation. You just fill out this card and like. Yeah. At Sundance, they have like a whole like sweet thing like that like don't they have like a gifting house or something yeah there's like well i guess they have those at every award show a gifting suite yeah and it's like incredible stuff it's like shit that you're like damn but that's what's crazy because it's like those those types of wealthy people they just get more wealthy because they're just like they don't have to go buy sunglasses yeah we were packing up like really nice purses they forgot who they're by but they were like really cool expensive purses to like every popular actress yeah and i was like whoa no i know (laughs) what is it about i think it's just because it's like there's something really exciting about free stuff yeah free stuff (laughs) but not just free shit like free shit that you want like i'm so excited even talking i know like we're both just smiling we're both just like so happy send me free stuff you know what Uh, someone who um works for beauty blender sent who listened to my podcast sent me and two of my uh guests one time each a box of beauty blender stuff and that was the first time i received something yeah like you know it's a good feeling and it was oh yeah and you get like a lot of cbd and we yeah it feels so good it feels it's like I'm, i'm so excited i'm still using all my sponges i you know what it is too i think it's just, just because like doing stand-up in la like it's hard to make actual like cold hard cash doing stand-up in los angeles aka you don't mm-hmm. so when you get any type of compensation it feels good especially because it's like it's like okay you're being rewarded for the path that you're taking well a lot of girls i follow on instagram get so much shit do you do you see that and they and yeah. they post on their stories like they're like oh I just have all this like La Mer stuff or like all these makeup products or like all the and I'm like oh my god well yeah I just want stuff I'm also just like okay like I wish brat. I had the balls to do like to a, message people to just be like no I'll message people if there's something yeah. that I'm like oh I wonder if I can get that I'll mm-hmm. just ask if I really want it but like you know well you know what I want um have you ever used Orbe shampoo. And oh. conditioner you know the brand orbe yeah i started using it it's they have the most incredible shampoo what kind but it's like 50 dollars for the well, shampoo right. like, why but i shampoo bought it because i wanted it so badly yeah and now it's all gone and i'm like fuck i need an orbe sponsor okay wait so how do we get an orbe sponsor we gotta just put it out there you well know, manifestation know, okay this um. is serious i know a girl who works for them and and she went to my high school, but I don't want to like. Hey, Bay, can I get some more Bay? No, um. That well, was I just made a post to her sale. saying, "I know the secret to your amazing hair. It's or Bay no. <laughs> that shampoo, just like kind of feeling it out." And she's like, "Yes, thank you." And I was like, "Okay, that's it." You're like, you know what? That's all I have. Yeah. No. Well, okay. This do is- we need a PR agent? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. What were you we gonna need, say? We need to get PR agents so we can get some, cause shampoo is expensive, and I use like I use a lot of products. Love. 
products. I know that you love products because I know that that because at your bridal shower you were like, Pro- oh my god! But <laughs> any type of product. Yeah. Yeah. I love a product too. Oh, I use your apron, by the way. You did? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's it's good. Cute. No, yeah, you. I know that you love a product. I love products. <laughs> because it's like, the, why? what is so fun about it? I don't know, but I feel the same way. So I have a lot of like um, luxury samples from products or oh, just like same. high end. And I can't throw them away. No, that's like a hoarding thing. I have it that It is a hoarding too. thing. I, I was cleaning too. out a bathroom closet and I was like, I filled up a Ziploc bag with like a ton of things. And mm. I don't think I'm going to use them ever. But, right. like, I try to use, like, the little, like, single face masks every once in a while. But, like, you know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah. what am I holding on to this for? See, okay, I don't know because it feels like – It feels, <laughs> it feels wealthy. It feels wealthy to yeah. have to be like, oh, I have these all these, like, affluent, like, testers and samples. Like, I look at all these products. Like, I'm a woman of luxury. Yes. Right? That's how yes. it feels. I'm but, a woman like, of leisure. Yeah, like, I'm a fucking decadent bitch. <laughs> like, yes, that's a fucking Chanel primer. And I put that on. Like, or – but the thing that's weird is – and how I know it's hoarding is because I only use the same products. Yeah, I just that you already collect, own. That I know I yeah. love. Yeah. And, and, like, I know that, like, I have, like, a backup blue mascara. But, like, when am I going to use that? But then yeah. I don't want to get rid of it just in case. Yeah, I, I I don't know when I'm... Okay, that guy really annoys me. Can you hear us? Okay. I don't think so. The last time I was doing a <laughs> podcast, he was in there. And he's, like, trying to intimidate me to leave. Really? This guy in this window who's like coming up next. What do you mean? Well, the last time he was like staring me down, and there's like a whole fucking thing that happened to me. I'm in ready the to sauna t- recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like at the um, I went to the sauna. Voda, Voda. Okay, have you been there? Yeah, I saw that you posted that. It's a lot. I like it. You really? mean a lot of money? I mean, like no. Well, first of all, one, I was in the sauna with like with i went with mel my friend mel yeah. you know her um we were in the fucking sauna and like it's this huge. pack of six like russian dudes came in and they were using scare tactics and they like <laughs> it was like they were using scare tactics to like intimidate us and get us out but like i was like we're, what were they doing they were just like talking to each other in russian and it was like they were making it really obvious that they did not want us there like it was just like we couldn't understand what they were saying but it was just like they were you like caught the vibe we caught the vibe and like i looked at mel and she looked at me and she had like no plans of leaving so we stayed in there and we won right uh-huh. but we get out of the sauna and it's probably like at this point like i think i may have been in there for 40 minutes because mm-hmm. i get out of there and i'm like dude you i'm were in there faint. for 40 i minutes? felt <laughs> like it's so hot i don't know if it was 40 minutes but it fucking felt like it and yeah. i felt like i was gonna faint mm-hmm. but we beat like the russian dude so i felt great do you it's- go in the yeah <laughs> You just said I felt great. You were like Russian. <laughs> I, I became Russian. Like I was channeling a, um, a <laughs> Russian woman somehow. I don't know what happened. Do you go in the cold pool? Um. Yeah, I went. Really? In the cold pool. Well, I've no, never no, no, been no, no, in no. it. No, the little cold pool. Yeah, like no. the freezing one. No, no. <laughs> like, have you ever been in it once? No. But don't you want to? Because you know, because <laughs> you know the benefits, but you're not ready. I'm not That's ready. That's how I feel, kind of about like cryo. I've done it once. Did you like it? No, it was so cold. But I feel like I should. I don't know if that's just like a fad or if it really truly is what incredible. Is supposed to Steven do? is obsessed with cryo. He no. Go- he goes like once or twice a week. He has a membership at a place. So he got to bring me as like a guest for a free one. And I would stay in it for two and a half minutes. And it was so fucking cold. I don't like the cold. I don't, I'm not. No. That's why I don't live in New York anymore. Like yeah. I don't. It, yeah it, it's it's freezing like i'd rather just not be uncomfortable if i don't have mm-hmm. to be and like to me like i don't know all of the benefits of like cryo or being cold but i what like i, I think I, inflammation like muscle you know it's like it's all the same, the same shit, shit. yeah, yeah like, exactly. oh, i did the sauna because i would just sweat what, out the toxins what like, about like an infrared body wrap or sauna have you tried that ooh an infrared body wrap i haven't have you yeah i've done the infrared i have a group on to an infrared <laughs> what is it's it? actually over the hill by you um really? at this place called sun spa tanning Sounds- and it's it's annoying to get there because i live in west hollywood and it's like half hour to get there and then you get wrapped up in this like hot thing and it's like 110 degrees and you're wrapped up for an hour and you're wearing long sleeves and sweatpants and you detox and you sweat a lot 
I don't really I've been in the actual infrared saunas which I do like better they're like little square red boxes okay those are cooler to me okay what other thing feels dirty it's like detox and all the same shit you know what I mean yeah who really knows i don't know everything's like marketed as being detox like here's this yeah tea. it's like is this even detox or is it just ginger like i'm confused you yeah know what i mean yeah do you drink green juice do you have a juice place you like um yes what is it creation oh yeah i like, like creation I like- have you ever had the chia seed pudding from there it's incredible yes I it's have. eight dollars it, it's i mean that's it's so the good thing though. that sucks i know all of that stuff is so expensive it's that lifestyle that ear one lifestyle or uh, like i uh, love air one me too i want to get that they have like raw cheesecake they sell it's like ten dollars so i got macaroni and cheese there one time it's, which is it's so good it was it's seven, honest, i can't even think about it it was 17 dollars. <laughs> no yeah, how i was much like how did you get? get i guess i got a lot i don't know no but like i i go there because i'm like dude i can't afford a, a whole fucking yeah. pint of mm-hmm. that mac and cheese but i will get a side yeah you know what i mean like i yeah. have to like wean myself a serving. off <laughs> yeah like, one serving which is nothing it's nothing and it's so good well like, i like it because it's gluten-free it's interesting because i'm like i don't understand like to me i would much rather go to a grocery store that offers um versatility like an air one mm-hmm. than like a gelson's or an albertson's where it's like what are you offering me that's that special well whole <laughs> foods used to be like a really right? n- whole foods fell the fuck off i don't eat yes. any of their prepared foods anymore no ever it's no. gross you can't go back once you go to Air yeah. One, you're like but oh. i think it was a little bit even i think it's been a while that whole foods has been it when whole foods came out it like was, oh, it was hot as fuck it was <laughs> incredible i mean i yeah i used to eat the indian food from there yeah whole foods used to be i don't know what happened it fell off like <laughs> three years ago yeah yeah and now after going to air one trader joe's looks like smart and final yeah, but this is what I will say. At least Trader Joe's doesn't have Whole Foods prices. Yeah. Well, I think every market is good for certain things, like hot food, air one. Hot food? No question. I don't want, I don't even really like getting like hot food from other places. Yeah. In terms of like a deli. Have you ever been to Jones on 3rd? Oh, yeah. That's so, fucking, but that's like the same expensive. level. Expensive, exactly. I used to go to Jones on 3rd a lot. And Me I was, too. I was the wasting. Salad trio, nonstop. When I, I worked at Bloomingdale's, oh, I really? walked there every day. Yeah. I never got that. The I would get trio. like the macaroni. I love macaroni and cheese. I that's do my too. favorite food. I love macaroni and cheese too. Like I also buy these um, gluten-free, they're called like Amy's gluten-free mac and cheeses. I've never had those. Okay. The broccoli cheddar one. It's gluten free and it has like they put like gluten free breadcrumbs on the top of it. Is this in a box? Like a it's a an oven in a box. Uh huh. It's in a box. Like you put it in an oven or a microwave. Yeah, you put it in the oven. Mm -hmm. Depends on which one you get. There's a three cheese one with kale. Great. The other one um, is just broccoli and cheddar. That sounds good. Also great. Better than the than the other kale one. The kale doesn't appeal to me. It's so fucking good. Wow. I'll have to get that. Yeah. Yeah. I I I live for macaroni and cheese. Me too. So I just noticed uh, when I was on my diet for my wedding that Pink Dot has macaroni and cheese. Really? And I've heard it's so good. Well, I heard it was good. And I've been thinking about it every day. I just remembered they have it. I, I Maybe I should get it. I got a free... Have you ever been to Bristol Farms? Yeah, Bristol Farms is good. That's... Nah. Bristol Farms is <laughs> on the, the shit. Yeah. Bri- Bristol Farms. Okay, I like the big Bristol Farms. Yeah. There's that little one on Sunset, but then there's like... No, I go to the big the, one on Doheny. Yeah, the, yeah the daddy of the Bristol. <laughs> the daddy Bristol. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> so good. Yeah. Uh, it's... And then I, yeah, I like to go there also for like prepared... Isn't it called prepared foods? Why do I feel weird saying prepared foods? I don't know. It just but feels yeah, that's too right. legit. So I'm uncomfortable. It's uh, prepared foods. Yeah, yeah, no, but I know what you mean. Like, it, it's they have like, good macaroni I'm not gonna and cheese. Go to like, I, like my nightmare would be, oh, I'm gonna swing by Ralph's and pick up one of those rotisserie chickens. Like, I'm not against it, but I'd rather not. Well, I just feel like markets have progressed so much. I know it's that, like, like that why sounds limit? ghetto almost. Do you know what I mean? Right, but then it was like, who is this for? And then you're like, oh, it's for like a bachelor or like a single mom rotisserie chicken is good <laughs> i used to fuck with the rotisserie chicken i haven't i haven't in a while i'm trying to get back into that life the rotisserie chicken one t- yeah i like i like chicken and rice <laughs> i'm a chicken and rice type of 
girl as well. Like I'm a fan. One on like one time I was on the plane when I was younger and they gave me like I was sitting in coach and they gave me a first class meal that was Eros con pollo. No. And it was incredible and I've just been trying to get back to that place. Isn't that weird though when you're a kid and you have something and like and it's like maybe like a good food and you don't have access to it all the time and mm-hmm. you're like I wish I could go back and like you don't have control of well, your life in that way. Did you used to eat TV dinners when you were a kid? No I wanted to so bad. Oh and your parents didn't let you? No my parents I really wanted like um those frozen burritos because yeah there's this girl who had it all the time i've been eating i i don't eat stuff like that anymore me either except the gluten-free mac and cheese well i would eat mac and cheese frozen for sure yeah but like i was like i want that so badly it looks so good just because my mom would never buy that and so why not she just would always make food she would, every night every night and like she is like like it'd be like a green vegetable and then other nights she'd be like oh it's f-. like every once in a while she'd be like i don't feel like doing it fend, mm-hmm. <laughs> fend for yourself night and mm-hmm. then we could eat whatever we wanted and that was fun yeah so and you, you it seems like you have a very good family like it seems your parents are still together right my parents are still together yeah how long yeah. have they been to, uh, married for? Um, 32 years you don't hear about that anymore yeah it's pretty crazy that's that i don't really know anyone who still has parents it's awesome yeah it's really cool i feel very lucky um isn't that funny too that like that's technically something normal that is like somehow so rare yeah it is weird because they do have that like example yeah so it's also it's cool because it's like each it, it's a good like um view into like a successful relationship Mm -hmm. um but it is weird because most people's parents are not still together yeah (laughs) have you learned stuff from them yeah like i i think like the biggest thing is that um they actually my mom um does my dad's bookkeeping okay um so she they work in the same place um like three days a week and then mm-hmm. the other two days she just like does her own thing mm-hmm. she's like very like um fiercely like independent okay um and i think that she always has had her own life yeah and i think that makes like a really really big difference well someone wrote that on it's so weird that this is coming up because we were just we're working on like thank you cards for the wedding and we saw that like this my mom's friend wrote this like really long thing about how important it is to live independent lives yeah but the way that she was writing it like was almost like weird to me but hearing you say it it doesn't do you know what i mean right like it's weird like for like like uh like maybe like a more like (laughs) advice out of context i don't know it felt like she was like almost trying to separate us it felt like threatening i can can see that because she kept reiterating it like five times when we were like whoa like we noted um (laughs) yeah yeah. but what you're describing i think that sounds important for a long term Right, because yeah. it's like, this is the other thing. It's like, there's no... She I, gives him a lot of space. Yeah, but also, like, she needs that space. Mm. And, like, he responds better to her with that space. Like, they both operate really well independently. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. What else? Do they do... Um, do they still go on dates? Or, like, take little trips together? Yeah, like... um so and like also the thing that's really interesting is i think my mom just accepts my dad and knows how to communicate with him in a way that makes sense to like his personality Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. he's a tough personality and like really yeah and if he's like um he's like very jewish no he's just like um intense he's a lawyer he's Mm -hmm. always like on the like he's like oh uh, running around. Aggressive. aggressive on the defense aggressive and just like just like he gets shit done and he's like has a level of intensity you yeah. know what i'm saying like it yeah. always seems like he's like thinking really intensely about something and you're like is this a good time he's like no you know what i mean uh-huh. like that's just uh-huh. his personality and so like i just think she's really good at knowing how to you know navigate those like types of like personality complexities and like 
I don't know. I know what you mean. And that just what you just said now, if I can, I want to get back to this, but uh, something I remember from Pat Allen yeah. is that she said, when you just said, is this a good time? And he said, no. I remembered that Pat Allen, one of her pieces of advice is that you should say, hey, I want to talk to you about something. When can is we a good- schedule an appointment? When is, a good- yeah. <laughs> is it or when is a good time for you? Yeah. She says, um, yeah, I wanted to, that's what she says. And it's just interesting because, um, it does seem like my mom, like a lot of like relationship things that I've listened to and stuff. My mom does all of those things. Wow. It's really weird. Uh huh. Does she make him dinner every night? No. My mom growing up when we were little, um, she's a stay at home mom. She mm-hmm. didn't do, she didn't, um, she didn't work. She stayed home and took care of us. But it was like, she always had interests and she always like when I was a kid, she would always be like painting or drawing or like, she'd be like, Oh, we're going to redo this or we're going to do that. Like she was never just like one like thing. lazy. She was never lazy. And she was always like putting in her part, following her interests. Right. Yeah. And it was like, she's like, Oh, I want to take this art class. She would take an art class. That's like cool. she would always find ways to like, I think intellectually stimulate herself and like creatively stimulate herself. And she always was reading or had just different things. And my dad's not as, um, so creative. Oh, he's just like, re- he's really smart. Like he's, um, he doesn't have like, I don't think he has time for like, interest i think he likes what he does but he I likes think, to work yeah mm-hmm. he's a worker yeah i like that yeah are you an only child no i have a little sister oh really yeah how old is she she is 20 she's in her late 20s 28 oh yeah uh what and what does she do she works in an office like she's like climbed the corporate ladder i don't even really know mm-hmm. um yeah we're very different really yeah yeah that's funny. Yeah. Well, like growing up, um, I just required a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. Um, like always. Mm-hmm. And loud and obnoxious. <laughs> and she just was like fucking over it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think she just thinks like part my personality is disgusting and like self serving. Oh, that's funny. And like I'm like, um, yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh huh. So you're living at home right now. Yeah. And yeah. Is it okay? Do you feel like. Is it weird? Is it weird or is there any, like, do you get along with them? Is there any, like, weird sex stuff? Like, have you ever no. heard? <laughs> no, like, there's no weird sex stuff. Thank fucking God. I know. You know what I've I mean? never seen my parents having sex I'd or like heard to it. keep it that way, like, Thank God. Like, my dad sometimes will make, like, inappropriate sex jokes. I'm like, well, this is weird. You know what I mean? I, it just feels isn't like. Isn't that? I as, feel like. Yeah, like, as an adult, it's weird because. Like, for a while, I was, like, so against living at home. Um, I fought it really hard. And I, like, lived in a studio apartment. I had, like, this job that I fucking hated. Mm -hmm. And I, like, could barely afford my rent, like, on my own, like, fully. So I was, like, you know, at this point, like, I came to a place of, like, I don't have to feel shame for doing this. It's just temporary. And, um... I do think it's taken me a long time to it takes me a long time and I have to remind myself like this is a choice Mm -hmm. and like if I'm going to choose to live with my parents then there are other sacrifices that I have to be willing to make and I'm willing to make them Mm -hmm. for comedy but it is it's it is it just I think it actually has helped me focus a lot more Mm -hmm. you know do you lay out at the pool yeah, I lay out the pool. I go in the jacuzzi, come That's over. That's amazing. Yeah, whenever. Yeah. I want to lay out of the pool. Yeah, I just started. Do- well, now it's like the end of summer, but yeah. yeah, whenever. I mean, like, I just started. I was like, why am I not enjoying the amenities? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, fuck it. I'm not feeling yeah. shame anymore. Now I'm just going to start enjoying the amenities. Yeah. So probably like, oh, damn, she's never moving out. No. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like it's... It's very Italian, even though you're not Italian. But a lot of people I grew up with who were Italian um, never moved out of their parents' house until they get married. Really? Like, I know that, like, in New York, a lot of people do that. Like, the area Mm -hmm. my mom grew up in in Astoria, like, there's people who have lived in the same apartment since the time they were kids. Mm -hmm. They just live there. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like, yeah, like, I definitely want to get out, you know? (laughs) that's The goal is to get out. But um, they're funny. They're, like... I mean, my dad nice likes watching the, yeah, they're just like characters, you know, mm-hmm. my dad likes watching the weather woman. I'm really? Like, and my mom would be like, Steve, stop watching the weather woman. Like, just like <laughs> dumb shit like that, you know, where you're like, your dynamic is so weird. Or my mom will write like post-it notes, like 
my dad keeps buying these chocolate raisins. My mom's like, stop buying those chocolate raisins because they're really not that good. And Uh like he just buys them and she says she has no like food self-control with them. And they're like, (laughs) she can't stop eating them. So Mm -hmm. then she'll like write a post-it note and put it on the raisins. And it'll be like, not for Debbie, underlined. That's funny. They're just like fun. (laughs) Or like my dad put like a grocery list on like the door and it'll be like, um, it'll be like melon, salt, and then whatever. That was like it, whatever else we need. Yeah, just whatever. And then my mom goes up to the post-it note, adds another post-it note with an arrow that says, what's whatever? Just like that's stupid. That's funny. They're but like, that's cute. They're like, it's like a fun little communication thing. Uh, yeah. But they're really into post-its. Have um, so Romy and Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> Romy and Have Michelle. they come into you perform? Not in a really long time. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that um, I don't know how much they fully get. Santa? creative like cr- like the, the guy, like Santa? getting creative career sort of thing kind of like, like they, stand up i mean i think that like they have obviously accepted it because like i live with them and like mm-hmm. they're not they're like very accepting and they want me to be happy but i do think that um they don't fully understand it like mm-hmm. why would you want like it's not an easy path so yeah. it's like as like an adult that's living at home, I think that they can see that it's not an easy path, mm-hmm. clearly. Mm-hmm. And so like, uh, it's just it's interesting, mm-hmm. like that. I think they want like stability for me. Yeah, and like it. Takes- Did they ever say like comments like, um, you have another plan? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, and yeah, that, yeah. And that's a that's hurtful, right? Right. Well, it's also hard to separate. To not take that on. Yeah. And to be like, okay, well, like, you're allowed to not understand this, and that's okay. Oh, my okay, God. You know? Whoa. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm constantly impressed by, like, I want to keep saying level-headed. I don't know what other word I would use to describe it. Thank you. Where did you just get that from? Um, it is okay. Can you repeat that once again? It's okay for you to feel that way, but I'm not going to take that on. No. Is it okay for you not to get... What did I say before? Oh, fuck, I forgot. It was like, it's okay for you not to, to understand. Yeah. That's weird. Did you come up with that? No, but like, I also just like, um, do listen to a lot of like self help stuff for a really long time. Like, yeah. I would say from the time that I was like, for the last seven or eight years, mm-hmm. different stuff, mm-hmm. all different. Um, but like, I, I get a lot from, um, like intellectual stimulation yeah yeah especially like self-help yeah stuff. me too yeah because it's like i think like as steven's an, obsessed with it with self-help shit yeah. yeah it makes it just like anything that can give you insight to like why you're here and how to navigate your personal relationships mm-hmm. whether it be like romantic or friendship or fucking parents it's like I want those tools because it's like I want to be able to connect with people um, and understand that, like, I don't have to take on, you know, Mm -hmm. other people, what other people think. Learning that information about how our brain works or why genetically or Mm -hmm. like why um, we have predispositions to certain things or why, like, our mind does certain things, it's so helpful. And, yeah. like, takes off almost, like, like pressure you put on yourself. And right. it, how it gives more understanding. And it's like, okay, that's the way that is. Now what can we do about it? Right. Which is incredible. Well, it's also, like, so... Um, I have to get back in the game. It's You know what's weird, though? Is it's, like, it, the more that you do it, the more you can feel when you drift from it, too. Because mm-hmm. it's, like... Yeah, when I'm working on myself and actually doing the work to better myself, I feel a lot better. And it's so easy to just slip into, like, patterns of comfort Mm -hmm. or, like, you get busy or, like, life happens. And it's, like, I'm really trying to focus on not shaming myself for getting away from those things because those things are still there. That's why they're there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I want to keep the channel clean and inviting. I mean, those are my own ways yeah of clean it. and inviting channel for sure yeah, yeah. steven uh does affirmations ev- every day and it's like i haven't found mine yet right you know do you do them um i do like okay before i go on stage i tell myself crazy shit like it's really? like um yeah like, i bet you so m- sorry i keep interrupting no. you I-, I bet a lot of people do that 
a lot of people yeah. and like a lot of successful people yeah i mean like after like anything that oprah does i'm on board with because mm-hmm. i like just feeling like if anyone it might be like god it could be oprah who knows um yeah i just think that a lot of successful people do things that maybe they don't even fucking talk about doing. Well, we noticed that, you know, when Tony comes out and he goes, I'm uh, the top uh, rising comedian. comedian. Yeah, yeah, He's doing that. And he's right. hypnotizing the audience, as Stephen says. Right. I mean, like, and like Esther, or Abraham Hicks, she's a bunch. She has this one thing about performing and about how you, when you're, you know, living your life purpose and and you're not focused on how other people receive your message and you just care about flowing out your message then there's like a natural energy exchange that happens Mm -hmm. but you know i listened to that one that you sent me i forgot to tell you on monday on my way to potluck did you like it yeah i did like it and it's about not being needy from the audience because then they notice that and it's like weird right which i agree with right because it's like yeah because if you even notice like the times where I'm having more fun and I'm more in the moment and less focused on what I'm going to say next, the more playful and better the performance is. Mm -hmm. But like, it's hard sometimes to remember those things. Yeah. It's about putting the focus on them. Right. Or on, or not on them. Well, yes, but not in the way that we're talking about. Right. In the way that you're not in your head and you're more communicating with them. Right. Yeah, exactly. Not in a way where them not laughing or responding the way that you think that they should respond isn't like if they don't respond that way, it's not going to throw you off because that's not why you're here for their reaction. You're here for your own energy flow. And if they show up for you in that way, then great. But she says, like, sometimes when you're performing and an an audience member laughs, like, that'll make you feel really good. But when you start depending on them to show up for you, then that's beyond your control and you have no control over that. Yeah. And then you feel bad if they can't show up for you in that way because, like, who knows what they're going through or or they aren't going through. (laughs) It'd be so funny if someone's bombing to go, I get it. You can't show up right now. (laughs) Yeah, that is funny. (laughs) Wait, and I interrupted you. What was the stuff that you say to yourself before you perform? Okay. Like, okay, from that book, I'm a badass. I just start telling myself because um, right before I go on, I normally start to feel a lot of Mm self-doubt. And it's not rooted in reality it's rooted in fear and it's um fear of it's like self-sabotaging it's like mental quicksand it's like what are you doing do you know what you're gonna say it's like okay yeah you know what you're gonna say you've done this how many times now yeah like you know what you're gonna say you're not gonna get up there and fucking forget what you're gonna say so a lot of like talking myself off that ledge and then telling myself that i'm powerful and i'll say that like over and over and over again Mm mm-hmm until I believe it. Yeah. And like, and <laughs> yeah. And like, or I'll listen to music that makes me feel that way. Like, it's a whole thing. I put my phone before I go on stage and do not disturb and airplane mode because I don't want anything to like mm-hmm. from the outside world getting into <laughs> my head's face and like taking me out of what I need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, And I'm just noticing that I'm very sensitive to outside things. Yeah. So, like, trying to figure out the best way, because, like, if I'm going to be a comic for at least most of my life, you know, not the rest of my life, which, who knows, but, like, if the shit's going to happen and you still have to be able to get on stage and do what you are there to do, regardless, yeah. like, I mean, like, what about Ellen? Like, she's on, she films things, like, what, every day, probably? Yeah. Like, what does she do if she's having a bad day? Yeah, I've had, uh you know experiences where i was like really upset or felt like shit and didn't want to go up and in the past more more like two years ago i you know would cancel i've canceled stuff before yeah and sometimes you need to and within reason sure right but i remember like uh last year i was uh check i was working the main room checking people in and this girl came in and i i had just you know me and uh my ex you know we just broke up maybe like one or two months earlier and she comes in and she looks in my face and she's like hey i'm here for blank Uh i'm here for this guy your ex you Uh know essentially she's like i'm on his guest list no yeah and then i was like okay and then her and her friends started laughing no yeah and it and it like 
fucked with you. It fucked with me for sure. And then I had to go upstairs in the belly room and perform literally two minutes later. I don't know how, but I killed harder than I've ever killed in like months. Somehow, I don't know how. It's usually the opposite for it's me. It's like an, a weird like energy transfer. And ever since that one moment, I have uh, not let myself not por- perform because of something. Because I was like, fuck it, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I'm glad that I had that. It, you know, I felt like, I feel like everyone has those like one experiences they need to get over. And then you're like, okay, forget it. Because the, uh, the rest of it is me just sabotaging myself with my brain. Right. But there's so much weird mental gymnastics that I think has to happen. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. like as a performer, like how mm-hmm. can I get my head in like a better place so that I can like show up in this way? How can I learn how to compartmentalize so I'm not transferring this weird energy in like onto the stage like yeah because they can also like the audience can read everything too like if you seem like nervous on stage and like you can't relax they pick up on it and then it's just like yeah weird they like sense weakness yeah (laughs) i try to like put out like a confident vibe i try to force myself to like be this different person yeah and like put out like you know what I mean yeah like I do think you know it's it's interesting because my dad is a lawyer and I do think that like there's like a um there's like a performance aspect in that too yeah it's very similar in that like you're writing and you're taking your ideas to like mm-hmm. convey a message and you hope that it gets a certain reaction mm-hmm. from the people that you're speaking in he has to really sell it too yeah he has to like really sell it and he's like um and like there's like a level of intensity there and that i think it, it's it's not dissimilar at all yeah from like having to you know perform it's the same shit especially because you're writing and then you're performing mm-hmm. it's weird yeah i was taking these pills you know those on it pills that rogan yeah, talks yeah, about yeah i was taking these ones called new mood they were like the anti-anxiety ones okay i was taking them before every single time i got on stage for pr- at least two years i never missed a time without it i felt like i had to have them i was like I was obsessed with them. I always carried them in my purse with me. Like I've been through so many bottles of them. And just recently um, they started, I've been, you know, taking them without an issue when I was really dependent on them Mm -hmm. because I have a lot of anxiety and I always get so nervous before I performed. Yeah. So nervous. And so I took these and it made me feel better and, you know, could have been placebo, but I think they did help in a way. And, um, for some reason they started one day like making me feel like turned down like turned my volume down yeah it made me feel weird and I was like oh those made me feel really weird yeah like out of nowhere one day yeah it's almost like they stopped working and then I was like I don't think I need them anymore and I now I it's been you know I've probably done like 10 spots without them And now I'm just going off. Like, of course, I get like a little nervous right before, but I've been using that. And like, I've never, I don't know, it's a new experience for me. And it feels really good to not need them. Yeah, that's, it's really interesting how um, so much of it is mental. Like, even in terms of like, I remember when I first started, I would like have a drink and then do a set. Yeah. When I first started. And like, I didn't. And it was just like, because that was what you did. Mm-hmm. It was totally. Like I know. That's what like was my reasoning. I'm like, everyone else gets to like have a drink and relax. I'm like, and then I would not do well. And like, because I'm a lightweight. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know who I think I am. Like, I can barely like, I don't know. And then like, if you have like, I had a bad set stoned. That was, that was, I'll never forget. What that. happened? Okay. It was in the, um, oh my God, it was so bad. It was in the OR. Mm-hmm. And it was the day. Now I'll never. I never smoke weed before I go up. Now, um, I'll write high though. But um, okay, if I I was going up in the OR and I didn't know that I was going to go up because it was like if it was years ago and a friend was hosting potluck, but I didn't know if he was going to put me up. And it was the day that I got my weed card because you still needed a weed card mm-hmm. to get weed in LA. And I had like two edible gummies. I go up on stage in the OR fucking on a monday it's already stressful i see the light come on but i don't know how long like i just see it out of my peripheral but i don't know how long it's been on 
So it could be like, and time is yeah. just like. And you weren't timing it on your phone? Well, just like my perception of time was so warped. Because yeah. I had two, ad- two edible gummies. Mm-hmm. And like I had, which is a lot. You didn't know if it had been like 10 minutes. It could have been 15 minutes or it could have been like it just went on. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, dude, I don't even know. And like words were coming out of my mouth, but they weren't like. I wasn't present in anything I was saying. It was just like <laughs> running through like a list. And I, <laughs> and the last minute of my set, I start, after I notice that the light's been <laughs> on, a fucking, I start talking super fast. And for some reason, like a country Western Shut up. voice, it's like a weird, <laughs> like, no, throat. like it's weird, like a creature's living inside of me. I'm like, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> like the last minute, I just turned like full on, like from like normal me to That's like, so funny. you felt like those people have a stroke and then they wake up speaking <laughs> a different language. But like, imagine two minutes regular voice, last minute, um, talking in a full Western. And you, did you accent. notice you were doing it? But you I was, stop but it? it was like, I couldn't stop it. And I just wanted to get my set over with. <laughs> then the host gets back up <laughs> and is like, I don't know why she was just talking in a country accent because she's from the valley. But like, anyway, it could have been a shtick. It, like a joke no, you were but doing. But it was just like bizarre. And yes. I felt like I had no control over it. And it was like the most jarring. <laughs> it was so jarring that I was like, I am never going to do that to myself again. Yeah. Like put myself in a position. Like why would I put myself in a position to fail? Or yeah. like to not do well i've that's so funny it was so bad though it was like one of those things you know when you have a bad set in that room and they're like yeah there's just like nothing but shame attached to it you're like Horrible. oh man i can't wait till next and Monday. it's so hard <laughs> yeah. to get over it it's so hard to get it over usually, it yeah it's and getting it's gotten a lot less me too like that but for so long I would really base my worth on like, oh, my Kill Tony minute from yeah. forever ago or my fucking OR set. I mean, yeah, I've never been on stage drunk or high. I'm so grateful You're so- that I have not yeah. But I, I've wondered if you smoke weed and go on. Like, Fucks do you up. ever get really paranoid and you're like, why are you all look in your head? And you're like, why are you all looking at me? Yeah, it's more, do you know what I mean? It's more so like the time for me, mm-hmm. my timing is just off. Mm-hmm. Like it, I'll drag out points. Mm-hmm. I'll be like lost in the thought as uh-huh. it's coming uh-huh. out of my mouth. You know what I mean? Like it just the flow. The is timing. Off. It's not, it yeah. just seems weird. It's like, are you know, it's hard when you're not in the same place as everyone i think it's easier if they're fucked up and the performer's sober because it's like i don't know do you remember other like really bad bombs that stand out that were like oh yeah okay and tell me if this happens to you what i i I can't think about them there's one that like i'll just never forget it was the worst bomb of my life thank god no one was there it was a bar show in like simi valley okay it it was like i hate bar shows me too and first and no one was paying attention and somehow the lights just get so bright in these like really bad bombs it's like yeah. all it's like the lights get so bad and you feel like you're like physically drowning in an ocean is that the feeling that you feel yeah it it feels like um i don't really have a lot of those though i in the beginning though i mm-hmm. had a lot more Mm -hmm. um and it feels just like quicksand it's like you're there and everything's fine and then all of a sudden it's not fine and you can't lie to yourself because there's no it's humbling it's like (laughs) it's humbling as fuck Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like once you i i don't know i would just like really personalize it too and mm-hmm. make it like they don't like me mm-hmm. or like I did a lot more act out stuff when I first started like bad. yeah like, I think I did that like too. bad <laughs> like like uh, yeah just Didn't like we talk about that recently? yeah I don't know the I have one where I would thing. like um I got down into like a pose and like showed a pose I did in yoga class like on the floor or like character voices and then try to switch back into my regular voice but then something would get lost in transition so it wouldn't really Mm -hmm. like more one woman showy honestly than stand up yeah but i think like all of that 
like if you had confidence and a couple more years of experience behind it yeah well yeah could you know i just feel like there's yeah get you you know get right. you a 15 minute netflix special <laughs> right it's like you just don't know it's interesting though because i feel like it's about trying to find whatever's most effective for you mm-hmm. so it's like if for you stand-up is different than like for me it's like i like to separate stand-up and acting into two different things i'm just realizing that like i've just realized that recently Mm -hmm. but i do think that like the thought of doing theater and like a one woman show is pretty cool too (sighs) theater does not appeal to me really yeah i used to really like it i mean like i wouldn't dive into theater in los angeles i just don't think there's much of a scene especially when you like compare it to new york it's Mm -hmm. like it, this isn't really the place for theater but it is mm-hmm. i do think it's weird that there there isn't more of it hmm. here like mm-hmm. i feel like if there was more of like a theater scene i think there is if you look for it but it's like weird it's like on santa monica boulevard there's like those little like weird random like black box art theaters. house theaters and you're like is well, this like real going, or <laughs> you don't go to see your friends play you have to see your friends play you know what I mean? Right. Or like your friend wants you to see this play because um, also your other friend might work at a network and you might tell them about it. You know what I mean? Like that's what yeah. it feels like. But that's like the annoying, like I don't think anyone's died to see their friends play. Do you know what I mean? No. Yeah. And also like I just don't. It's really interesting because I do think there's a lot of great actors like in the world. Um, Even like I saw like. I went to Portland one time. I was dating this fucking asshole that lived in Portland. And I went there, and he took me to, like, a small theater production of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest Mm -hmm. and, like, a small, like, Portland theater. And it was, like, fucking amazing. Yeah. Like, that type of shit's, like, cool when you can see talent. Yeah. I saw a cat on a hot tin roof with Scarlett Johansson in New York. Was it cool? Um, I can't remember. I don't think she was good. And then, but I did watch the, um, fish in the dark. Is that what it's called? The Larry David play and Jason Alexander played him in the play. Oh, I didn't know. That was kind of cool. But originally Larry David was doing it. Really? But by the time I was able to go to New York and see it, it was Jason Alexander. Ah, that's crazy. That's kind of fun. I think as I get older, I can appreciate it more. Yeah. It's just interesting because, um cultural things they're just so like i would like to go to the ballet like i'm yeah. into that i've like, been to the ballet me too i just haven't been in so long yeah but like that sounds fun and like fancy like oh, i'm gonna go watch the ballet sorry i can't so this guy w- in new york was like taking me on a date to the ballet okay and i dressed up and i thought it was gonna be like this really awesome thing and it was just more of like a lesser ballet it was like, it wasn't so like, was like an experience. I was like, I don't need to be wearing this. Because it's like a dressed up thing mm-hmm. normally. Mm-hmm. He took you to like a low rent well, I'm, I'm going back to New York in for Christmas. Well, I'm going to my friend's wedding, which happens to be on New Year's. Oh, shit. So maybe me and I'll take Steven to Radio City Music Hall for yeah. Christmas. Like, yeah. have you ever done any of those things? I No, I like haven't. Like the Nutcracker? I saw the nut. Well, I, I did, um, like, the Rockettes. I remember. Yeah. They came to Los Angeles for Christmas one year, and we did that. I did that. And then, like, Disney on Ice. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I saw Book of Mormon. Wicked. I saw that, too. Did you like it? Yeah. yeah. It was, It was like, well, that was, like, the first musical I'd seen in a long time. Same. And I was like, oh, well, this one's, like... You know, probably funnier than most. Yeah. What? So I had that going. Yeah. It's like, okay, this is the other thing. Like, I feel like I could write a musical. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also don't know. Because it's like, yeah. how hard could it really be? To, it like, seems just, like I anything. I to, like, music. Yeah. I don't it's know. Like, how, it's like. Words it's that like, rhyme. <laughs> yes. We form a band. I'm making one. Sorry. You're just making a musical. I got scared. No, it's okay. I mean, like, see, like, I think that would be, I think it'd be fun to, like, try to write a musical. Yeah. My mm. impression of just writing a musical was just hitting the microphone and three I, times. You're like, Did yeah. you notice that? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, this seems normal. Like, should <laughs> I start thinking of lyrics right now? Like, I was trying to, and then I. I got scared. It was like, in the podcast room, but I'm bum. You That's can you next. take a shroom. But um bum. But don't mind. But um bum. If you fall behind. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Your daily grind. <laughs> yeah. I went through a fucking rap thing. Me too. Really? I had a I did an actual freestyle battle in New York mm, with like too. all these people around and I won. I beat Pat Reagan. I'm still oh, riding funny. that high. Mhm. It was fun. And then Alex Phillips and then I lost in the third round. This was like in a gritty bar in New York. I and I, mine was Snow Bunny. Snow Bunny? Mhm. She yeah, I like that. I I still remember. I was like, uh, she was like a big girl, and I was like, "You're not dunking baskets. You're dunking donuts." Beep beep, let through the tow truck. <laughs> what? I, like, I love that. Like that. I love that. Yeah. No, but like, isn't that's weird that you remember? Um, that and it was right around the Mayan thing. Do you remember that whole like death thing? And I said, 2012. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was a. It, it must have been in 2012. And I said, uh, I get laid more than a Hawaiian. You were dying in this battle. I was worn by the Mayans. I like and it was that. like, ah! It yeah. was fun. It's it felt fun. like, it was really, uh, yeah, no, it, I get it. It was a hot moment. I get that. Uh huh. Because I was told, um, what did I say? Um, <laughs> hold on. I forgot what it was. Something to Pat Reagan was like, how the fuck are you going to act like you do stand up when you sit down with a guitar? But there was something that Does rhymed he? with it. But there was something that rhymed with it. And now it just sounds like maybe it'll come back to me because like, trust me, mm-hmm. I think about those bars <laughs> often. And like now oh. under pressure, I just crack. But I'm like, what was it? Yeah. Well, if you had a whole entourage behind you, you would remember. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know, yeah. there's like people on both sides. Yeah. Did you hear Eminem's new song? I didn't, but people yeah. are talking about it. Is it good? Uh, it was like, I don't know. There's like moments of greatness in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then I'm also like, I just don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care about new music. No, but like, that's what it, that's what's weird. It's like, okay, there's a person that died. The Mac Miller thing. It's like yeah. He's dead. Full circle. Full circle never. Is it? Is it too late to get into him now? Or no. Or is this like... But like we can do, end on this. Do I want to? Okay. Do we? I get don't know. In, what were you going to say about Mac Miller? I don't know. Do we want to get into Mac Miller? At the I don't end? know anything kind of about him. I actually either. realized I went to his house and I met him briefly. I did like a photo shoot at his house. It was so weird. Like this person contacted me on Instagram to do a photo shoot. This like guy. And then I went to the house. It was like in the valley or like over the hill or something. Right. In Studio City. Right. Like this big house. And then we went there and then um, and then I was like in the outfit. And then he was like, oh, I forgot my film or like the batteries on the camera or something. No. Yeah. And I was like, OK. And then he's like, well, do you want to just do this another day? It was like the weirdest thing. But it was at <laughs> Mac Miller's house and he was like sitting on his couch and they were like, he was like, oh, he's letting us use his house. And I was like, hi. And that was it. How, it was wait, weird. Wait, That's when my was movie. that? It was probably like three years ago. It's weird the situations like you get into. Like, you know, just like as a woman, like in Los Angeles, just like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to like, like, I remember I went to Les Moonves. But fuck Who? It, Les Moonves. He's like the head of CBS. Like right now he's like, uh-huh. in trouble for like a bunch of like sexual assault type of yeah. shit. Or like it's like back and forth. Mm-hmm. I remember I went to like I, his son was like, come over for mm-hmm. a photo shoot. I like drive <laughs> uh-huh. to like this fucking fancy ass house. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm just going to have a photo shoot here. Like, what? Yeah. And what happened? Did he try to hook up with just you? just like, no. But like, I just remember like not loving the photos. Yeah. And being like, I hope those don't surface. You know what I mean? Like, what was I thinking? Well, there's, there, there's like a whole scene of guys with cameras who are trying to be like Terry Richardson or something. Yeah. Like Model Mayhem. Yeah. Like predators. Were you ever on Model Mayhem? No. I was. Yeah, it was not I don't think a proud, I don't think I was. I I know what it is. I don't think like, I ever created one though. Little, yeah, but like I'm like, does that it still exists? Because isn't I remember, that embarrassing? It yeah. Well, I had to. I remember like like a few years ago, I emailed. I was like, can you please just like permanently remove this? Like, yeah. I don't want any fucking trace of it. Like, what else is left? Um, Live Journal. Do you have Live Journal? No. Oh, that was like, no. But I had MySpace. Yeah, in my space too. My name was Smackin' Babies at the Christenin. No. Yeah. Smackin' Babies at the Like cr- the Biggie song. I like that. Uh-huh. Mine, well, I don't know what my MySpace name, I was very into like, okay, it's weird because I keep seeing this kind of stuff like popping up now too, 
Cry Baby. That was one of my screen names. It was like Cry Oh, like Baby. the movie? Just like Cry Baby. Like, because uh-huh. I'm a crier. I'm like always, <laughs> like, I don't fucking know. Like, I thought it was like a cool name. I like it, though. And then like a series of numbers. Yeah. And then it was um Cherry Chica, because it was really a <laughs> cherry theme. Things. That's your Puerto Rican name. Yeah, just like, that's when the Puerto Rican came out. Uh-huh. And choosing my AIM screen name. I was like, Mine was Bubble 8811. Bubble Idiot? Yeah, after Bubbles from Absolutely Fabulous. Who's that? I don't know who that is. She was like the crazy secretary, but I like my mom used to love the show and I just made it bubble after her. Yeah, it's like weird where you get inspiration for your mm-hmm. name names as a kid. Yeah. Well, well, Sarah, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you so much so for much coming. Fun. Yeah. Where can we find you on social media? Find me at Princess Shank, Princess like normal, and then another S H E N K. And then check out my podcast, Shank, S H E N K, as well. Chelsea was on it. And um, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. Bye. Bye.